while your day is winding down. They're just getting started. This is South Coast Tonight with Chris McCarthy and Marcus Barrow. They've got you covered on all the news of the day. From local issues to politics on both sides of the aisle. This is the place where the movers and shakers come to be heard. To listen. And where they're held accountable. This is South Coast Tonight on WBSM. Good evening. Welcome back to the show. Five zero eight nine nine six zero five hundred. That's how you can get on the program. We had a we had a, a conversation going before the break. We're, we're going to pick it up uh, again. And um, I, I think um, our liberal defense attorney friend here um, has got a very interesting opinion on this that um, uh, we'll all enjoy, uh, I think. Um, but on the Stormy Daniels Donald Trump thing. Here, here is the, the the piece of the matter is she she whether she did or didn't have sex with him, she sold back her story, her rights to the story, um, to Cohen. The argument that the district attorney is making is that the only thing it was done for was for political reasons, and that Donald Trump used corporate funds to pay her off. He, here's the thing, though, and go ahead, you can finish. So that. So that he used that he that according to their theory of the case, he should have used campaign finance money to pay this because it was a campaign expenditure, not use business money. When anybody in their right mind understands that having an affair, whether it happened or not, but being involved or even accused, despite the fact that you're a political candidate, has other ramifications on your family to include your wife to include your children, to include your prenuptial agreement that may be contingent upon things like credible accusation of, of adultery, right? right? That's often in prenuptial agreements. So there's a lot of other reasons that Donald Trump would have paid someone regardless of the political campaign. So the theory that Alvin, um, the district attorney of New York City, uh, Manhattan, is using is that it, it was a purely campaign expenditure, so therefore he shouldn't have used business funds. And that's why it's a felony. And that's also how he's using to get around the statute of limitations, as I understand it. So I, I think that it's an absolutely ridiculous case. And I think that anybody, whether you like Trump or not, ought to be concerned about it. Marcus. Yeah, uh, the, yeah. I guess apparently it was a fake documentation of legal expenses, essentially what it was, is why he's trying to charge him. Right. Now, here's the thing about this, about uh, him being a former president. It was something that he did when he was not president of the United States, right. right? And when you just, the fact that you were or have been president, I don't think should inoculate you from any criminal wrongdoing that but you may have that done. Isn't that why they're going after him? Yeah, so that's the thing. Here's Here's my thing on it. One... You know, and, and as far as Stormy Daniels extortion, uh, the extortion thing, my understanding of the events is that she contacted the National Enquirer to sell the story to them. They, Trump's, uh, the National Enquirer publicist, uh, reached out to Trump. Trump then, Trump's attorneys then reached out to Stormy Daniels and they negotiated an agreement, to, uh, for hush money, right? Um, so. Protection money. So, so she was, so she was, if she had gone to the National Enquirer and then gone to Trump and said, hey, I could get this unless you pay me this, I think that's a more explicit case of, uh, of extortion but, than but obviously, she's being contacted. She had lawyers. Yeah. Lawyers advise you not to commit crimes. They do, usually. And, and they'll... Michael Cohen didn't. ...often coach you through a crime. Yeah. In fact, her lawyer, Avenatti, is now in jail for extortion. He is, he is in fact, in jail for extortion. Not pertaining to this case, as no. far as I know. No, yeah. but, but, but he didn't just learn it. The Maybe trade. Did. The trade. So, um, the trade so, of blackmail is a sinister one. Here's my thing with, with, uh, with this. Okay, if you're the, but, dis but, oh yeah, go ahead. Mark. If you're the district attorney in Manhattan, Manhattan, as we've talked about off the air, is the economic fulcrum of the entire, the economic center of literally the entire planet. Correct. So there's probably a lot of unscrupulous dealings that happen with people that can be traced through 
on Manhattan somehow, right? Because yeah. that's where a lot of business is done. And I feel like if you are the district attorney of Manhattan and you want to snuff out wrongdoers, you want to take down powerful people right. who are doing wrong and indict them and criminally convict them. I think that's all well and good. Mm-hmm. But to my knowledge, this seems to be a unique case where he's aggressively going after somebody for a violation of the business records law. Right. Now, Trump may have broken that law, and sure, there are consequences, but prosecutors, as we know, have discretion. And so you wonder where that discretion has been applied. Has it always right. been applied? Has, if he's been out there violating people for business record stuff all the time, if he's been out there right. trying to get collect indictments, going right. to grand jury, getting grand, convening drink, grand juries together for business record laws all over the place, right. yeah, let's get this guy, let's get that guy, let's go after these guys, then sure, yeah, I, I get it. You know, yeah. there's, but, but, to my knowledge, I don't think he's done that. I, I, Maybe I, he has. I, I agree with you, Marcus. So, so this this whole thing. Listen, I don't think Trump's a good person. I don't think Trump it's necessarily. Not required. I, right, and I don't necessarily <laughs> think Trump should not be outside of a prison. I don't think Trump should be outside of a prison. But I don't understand. Like the motivation for this is is so Purely political, thinly. But it's so like thin. It, it's so thinly supported, and I think not as easily understand uh, understood by the general public that I can't imagine the backlash from this is going to be positive for Mr. Bragg or the Democrats. Or, and, or for our justice system. Yeah, that too. And, and, and look, the reality of it is, is that we know that we have political conflicts in this country. In fact, we encourage it. We encourage people to be in different political parties. Mm-hmm. The idea that if you run for office, everybody with law enforcement credentials in the opposing party should start investigating you and try to find out if you ever did anything within the scope of their purview. Yeah. That they can begin an investigation. And look, oftentimes, once you start an investigation, Howie Carr was saying it today, the process is the punishment. Yeah. Right? Do you know how expensive it is to defend yourself against a government investigation? Sure. The idea, we have a former president living quietly right over here on Martha's Vineyard. For years, the district attorney of the Cape and Islands has been a Republican. It happens to be a Democrat now. If the Republican... It was basically the same Republican for 40 years, more or less. It was Rollins into um, well, no, um, the in yeah, Phil, Phil Rollins and O'Keefe, and yep. O'Keefe was Rollins' second, yeah, oh yeah, in command, yeah, and then they were they were trying to get O'Keefe second in command, right, elected, yeah, right. If it wasn't for Jeff Deal, it would have worked. Now it's uh, yeah, right. Now it's Rob uh, Rob Galboys, who's actually a friend of the show. Yeah, well, does friend of the show? Can I say that for someone who's been on once? I think if he's a district attorney, you can. <laughs> <laughs> because I'll swear the judge, I'll swear the news it. <laughs> oh, Mr. Gatterboys, before we go ahead with this arraignment, you know, you, you're a friend, you're a friend, friend of the, of the show. show. <laughs> <laughs> you have to transfer this to Bristol again. So, so, so my point being is that if this was a, a Republican district attorney going after President Obama, I would be just as outraged. Because the reality is Donald Trump is being prosecuted for being a Republican presidential candidate I think by a county district attorney. I think it is worth noting that we – Trump said he was going to be arrested on Tuesday, uh, tomorrow, I guess, right? We don't know – if that's true. In fact, we think that it's probably not true. Look, folks, what I would say to you is this. If, it, if you're enraged by it, and as I am, watch it from your television at home. Don't go to Manhattan. Don't get involved in a protest. Do not well, Because that's do what anything. Trump was trying to do by announcing that. Yeah, he was, trying to, he was trying to build momentum for a protest. Right. So, and it's wrong. So Yeah, and I think it's wrong, too. So here's the thing. He... Well, you don't think protesting in the street is wrong. You just think in this occasion it would be. Yes. So here's the thing. Uh, you like to get out there and yip it up with, the, with everybody else. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So here's the thing. I, I just don't think Donald Trump is someone worth protesting I over. agree. I don't. But um, I, I think all protests are stupid. <laughs> they are. So <laughs> They're uncontrollable. So, How many um, people who thought they were going to 
down to, on January 6th to make a legitimate yeah. street protest. Well, I ended don't know up in if trouble. anybody actually thought that. Oh, no, I, I think there's a lot of very in, very innocent people who got caught up in the moment. Yeah. But but anyway. <laughs> the, the guy, what's that guy? It wouldn't sat, happen if they didn't The guy go. who sat at Pelosi's desk, big O. Big O, the guy who sat at Pelosi's desk. I don't oh, think he no. went down there saying, I'm going to go no, make no, my no, voice heard. No, I don't mean him. But, I mean, I think there are people who go to protests with well-meaning, and there are people around them who do something. And next thing you know, you're involved. And, 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 by the way, it doesn't do anything anyway. So Protests are stupid. So write a letter to your congressman. I think um, the great Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King would disagree with you there. but No, he started writing letters, but he just had to do something different. Well, he did start writing letters. So, um, but he also um, was was blamed for a lot of violence. He was. Oh well, if you don't want to be blamed for violence, hmm. In other words, when you get involved in protests, he was actually vilified for it. His public approvals were not great. No, I when know. He died. I yeah. Know. So, um, that's why the communists assassinated him. So, I, I don't think the communists assassinated him, but I think that's another episode. So, um, it's worth noting <laughs> that. I think the FBI did. So it's worth noting. I said the communists. <laughs> I, think the FBI, I, think, I think the FBI killed Martin Luther King. But um, it's worth no. that eventually it'll come out and it'll just be one of those things like, oh, yeah, I guess we did that. I guess there we was did no, this. There was no FBI agent named Raul in those days. So the. That was the bag man, Raul. Right. You know, they have assets, though. So here's <laughs> we're getting off topic. So here's the uh, here's the thing. Trump said he's going to get arrested. We think that's probably not true. We think that not that way. Anyway. He's not getting because he's not his spokespeople aren't even confirming what he said. Right? No, not at all. Yeah. They would, they, you, and also they would surrender him. He's not going to get arrested in the street like he's trying to make it. Oh, uh, maybe do the, the the Rudy Giuliani perp walk thing. The the thing is, I don't think the Secret Service would allow it. Good point. It's got, he's got secret service detail. Right. So they um, wouldn't, they wouldn't, they would work in conjunction with the NYPD. Well, my, the point I'm trying to make is we are making assumptions based on what we know and based on what's been reported about the Stormy Daniels incident and what Trump is, what Trump is likely going to be indicted for. We are, we to the, to, uh, to this point, do not actually know, one, if Trump's going to be indicted, and two, what he's going to be indicted for. Right. We're just making these assumptions. So he could be indicted for something entirely different from what we're talking about, or it could be the exact thing, or he could not be indicted at all because, to our knowledge, I think a court spokesperson said there's no charges to talk about, mm -hmm. and the Manhattan DA's office, to my knowledge, hasn't comment, has declined, uh, has declined requests for comment. So we still don't actually know if any of this is going to happen. We're just sort of assuming, just based on what we've heard so far. I, I think that the... Um, we're assuming that he will be indicted, but we're also assuming why. And we don't know why he's going to be indicted yet. Right. The um, Look, I, I would say this. I think, when I say it, I, I don't mean a conviction, I, but I mean an indictment. I think there's a lot of grounds on the classified documents down at Mar-a-Lago. Um, for them to move forward with an indictment. Not saying it's a conviction, but um, that's something of serious consequences. Mm -hmm. Something that could have wide-ranging ramifications. Um, I don't. I, it doesn't make any sense to me why the president did it, um, but that's why we have courts. The idea that the level of paying off a woman you had an affair with is somehow rises to the level that, that the county district attorney is going to go after a person for it. Knowing that it's, it's potentially going to cause tremendous distrust in our legal system. Mm -hmm. um, given that he's got a track record of being very, very lenient with serious crimes to then go after such a minor crime on such ridiculous charges to even make the statute of limitations go away by extending it and linking a state crime to a federal crime and then using that combination 
to go after the highest profile person in the country. Yeah. It's absolutely outrageous. Uh, yeah, I, I think that, again, you know, I, I think, I feel like if, again, if you're the Manhattan DA and you want to start doing this and Trump is one of the people that you're going to do this to, I would like to, just as a Democrat, as uh, just as someone who probably, you know, probably more politically agrees with a lot of the stuff he, he you know, he, he agrees with prosecutorially, um, I would like to see, okay, cool, you're going to do this. Well, there's probably a lot of other unscrup unscrupulous business people in Manhattan that you could go after for these same laws. If you're going to hang people up on this, okay, fine. But to like I said, to my knowledge, he's not interested in doing this. He's just interested in Trump, which makes me think that this is just a stunt. It's, it's, it's a stunt, and it's also... Look, we and I do not like Donald Trump. No, no, I, I get do not vote for him. Believe me, I get <laughs> no, that. It's and, and it's, it, I, I'm trying to do my best to separate my previous support of Donald Trump from this particular episode because I think everybody ought to be looking at this and saying one of the things we really like in this country, we don't always like the outcomes, but is our justice system. Uh, I don't agree with that at all. Or, I don't or, think we like it at all. I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't like it. I think most people do. Yeah. The, even if, if I don't think they should. The, even if it is the um, the idea that justice is blind. Yeah, I don't think that's true either. This guy is, is using the justice department, using his own tiny little version of the justice system, to go after someone purely for the political stance. Yeah. Purely. And only because he believes they will help him in a Democrat primary in the state of New York. 508-996-0500. Good evening. How you doing? My name is Johnny Wendell. How there he is. Hey, Johnny. Hey, my hey, friend. How you happened? doing? Not bad. All right, good. Coming around. Coming around. I, your, your voice is sounding really good, Chris. You sound like you're coming back almost 100% there. It, it's been a long road, but I, really a lot stronger. On the days I don't have dialysis, I'm 100%. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm the same. Some days I can't talk. Some days I can sing like Frank Sinatra. It's amazing, right? Yeah. The the mind and the body are, are amazing. Mysteries. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. So um, here's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping that tomorrow everybody who supports... <clears throat> Dan, Daniel Tennyson. <laughs> <laughs> That's Trump's go, alias. <laughs> go, go to New York, right? No, no, no. What, what about what about all these these uh, southern redneck guys with the big bellies and the AR-15s? How are they going to bring an AR-15 into New York City? I you hope they don't carry a seven-nose revolver in New York City. I really hope they don't, Johnny. I really. That's my my fear is that. I love New York City, and it's is it something goes horribly wrong. And not to mention, I have a lot of family members in New York City who I like, um, and, and who are in the justice system. I just I just think that it's got the potential to be a disaster. Yeah, I I, I don't I don't think it will be that bad. I don't know. I don't think. First of all, he may not even get arrested tomorrow. He he might be trying to drum up a big Thomas. Oh, scheme, I know? do think that that's what's going on. I mean, I I think he's trying to lay the groundwork right now to get a lot of people into the city. Um, he's always said that he always admired where are our people. He, either he is quoted as saying. Where's all our street guys? All that stuff. He said that before January 6th. But he obviously found it on January 6th. There's a lot less to be admired about having street warriors. Yeah. And they're you know, susceptible to, to agent provocateurs. Yeah. yeah. I Don't you think... I See, I, I don't really see this... Although it has proved him a liar many times over, but hey, who cares, right? Everybody lies these days, right? <laughs> Donald Trump, I'm sorry, Dan Dennison shouldn't be any different. <laughs> but, you know, proved him to be a liar, dirtbag, you know, he cheats on his wife while she's pregnant or whatever. We know he's not a good guy. We knew that. We already knew that. It's not why we voted for him. Right. Right. We didn't, well, I didn't vote No, for I know him you didn't. What I'm but saying is that's not why his supporters I voted never, for him. I, hey, I left the Republican Party when they nominated him. I've been a Republican my whole life. 
you know, and I, 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 I said, if they nominate this clown, that's it, I'm done. And I was done. And I'm an independent ever since. So, but what about, I, I think, don't they have a better chance with the phone call in Georgia? I mean, come on, man, that's, isn't that like pretty much black? And white? I, I feel like, listen, just um, sure, except it's recorded, right? Yeah. So the phone call in Georgia for people who don't know, I think, is a lot more damning than this. Just in terms of think? reputationally, I think a lot more. And it's damning much than more this. consequential, and it's a lot more consequential. So basically, uh, Trump called the Secretary of State in Georgia at the time, and I think the the governor at the time too, Brian Kemp, who was the Secretary of State previously, um, but he had basically asked uh, the Secretary of State to quote unquote find like whatever it was 20,000 votes he said go find all these votes now that I think is actually a lot more I think what he said is all you have to do is find yeah 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 all all I need is something like that so but the accusation being that he asked the secretary of state to find votes for him right in Georgia he didn't didn't ask him he pressured him several times in other words you know wink wink nod nod you know I haven't heard that phone call in like over a year, but it wasn't good. Yeah, I remember that. It was a very, it was a very good phone call. I had the best <laughs> phone calls. <laughs> the perfect phone call. Perfect. That's what you said. That's I got. I got impeached for a perfect phone perfect call. Perfect phone call. The perfect phone call. Do you think that one will be coming up? That case. Do you, you think that one will? Go I don't know. I, that's they, that's they, gone away. Yeah, th- that's the question. Is like, is there other like? Let's say, all right, you want to indict Trump. Um, is there other like? stuff that is more like I think easily able to follow than this stuff like he violated the business records law how about he tried to fix the election right like right. that's a lot easier to for for most people to follow than well he violated the business records law because see he said there was a retainer agreement but there's not really that's too much that's so, too much crap so and I mentioned him here before he's no relation but Andrew McCarthy who's a Republican lawyer former U.S. attorney uh, assistant U.S. Attorney, prosecuted national security cases, really knows the, the, the documents, how, how top secret stuff works. Um, he's not a fan of Trump, um, but he's, he's in the National Review universe, but he's a Republican. Um, he says over and over again, there's more than enough evidence on the documents. And when, you, when he lays it out for you, it's Talking very, about the, uh, the, the classified the, documents so, at Mar-a-Lago. So the classified documents at Mar-a-Lago is what you're saying is is a more substantial and, and I think easily understandable basis to convict Trump than this business records law stuff. And it's a real crime. And it's a real crime. Yeah. I mean, that's a yeah. real crime. Yeah. But but the Justice Department is, in my opinion, they're they're looking for a cutout. They're yeah. hoping that Alvin Bragg or the the, the uh, district attorney in Georgia will do what they they don't have the courage to do. Yeah, that's it. I, and I don't. I can't explain why. I don't know why they won't just do it. Because look, what Donald Trump did, based on what I understand to be the facts, but that's why we have trials, was so outrageous. Okay, the the, the cl- classified documents. Yeah, basically. taking classified documents, thousands of them. Um, I get that he can declassify documents, but it's totally irresponsible to, to take them without having them been redacted. By the, by the people that understand sources and methods. And as I said, as I use an example, Marcus, the Cuban intelligence agencies are the most skilled intelligence agencies in America, in the, in the Americas. And certainly in one of the most in the world. They're all, they're all over South Florida. All you have to do, it's very possible that they have sources inside Malago, mm-hmm. or at least are working to get to sources all the time. If Donald Trump has classified documents unguarded in that facility and someone's there who's got a family member in the DGI and they look at these documents and there's stuff in there. It's and the it's DGI. The, the Cuban intelligence agencies. Oh, yeah. And they're able to report back sources and methods just by reading a document, taking a picture nowadays. And that's the type of stuff that Donald Trump possibly allowed. And, and that is absolutely unforgivable. It really is. And I, 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 I just cannot understand how anyone, including the president himself, the former president, can, can overlook it. That, that being said, I think what, what Biden did is wrong as well, given the fact his particular history has been in the, in the U.S. Senate since the 70s. So he understands the classified document system. But we're just talking about Trump right now. 
So the idea that the Justice Department hasn't indicted him on those documents, but they're all waiting around to to, 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 to bust him over a stupid um, business records case in New York City by a county district attorney. It's, it's irresponsible, I think. Yeah. Just to begin, and I believe. Hey, Chris, can I yeah. ask you a question? You may. What happened to our friend on Martha's Vineyard? What was his name? Ferris. The guy who pulled back and forth. I think the Ferris. guy. I, I think. I think the guy who didn't get us got him. Yeah. I think, I think he's, he's waiting for us in the Great Martin. Talk he's Radio Heaven. Yeah. But I will tell you, Johnny, I will tell you a funny story. I know I've told Marcus a little bit of this, but one of our, one of my good friends who who is a regular listener and occasional caller, he understood that I had lost all my contacts in my phone. So he used another phone that I didn't know the number for. And he began sending me text messages (laughs) as if he was Ferris. (laughs) <laughs> referencing South Carolina, <laughs> referencing <laughs> Menemsha, re- referencing seeing Dershowitz at the store. I mean, going on and on and on, right? And he and he sent me a couple, and then he would space them out, and he would send them. He's a, he's a real good practical joker. And I was like, I, it, I, <laughs> I, I thought Ferris it, it was not around anymore. But I wasn't quite sure, and I think I even told him. I think Ferris is now. Te- it's not, I'm good friends with the guy. I think I yeah. said to him, Ferris is now texting me. At which point he continued to do it, <laughs> <laughs> realizing he had the hook in me, right? Yeah. But I know enough practical jokes have been done on me, and I've played enough that I didn't quite bite on it, right? Otherwise, I was going to go down the rabbit hole, and he had me, right? But anyway, Ferris is alive and well, at least in the memories of some of my friends, including you. When he when he didn't call and comment when the uh, Im- when DeSantis sent the immigrants to the island and we never heard a call about that from him, I was convinced at that point that he had passed on. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. That. I agree. Yeah. yeah. All yeah. right, guys, good to talk. To hey, you good, then. good, good thing, my friend. I'm I'm, I'm glad we're all here on this side. You, this you too, my brother. Thanks. So, you know, the last time I talked to Ferris actually was when I had my Saturday show and he called in with one of his characters. Right. And I said, no, it's funny. Ferris has never called into my show before. And then the character goes, that's because he has standards. <laughs> <laughs> he was so good. <laughs> he was good. He was so, good. He said a bunch of awful stuff, though. No, like, no. But, but, like his, but, 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 his, but we were all so. so he's awful. It was an ongoing debate. I always thought. In the end, he was he was playing a character. Maybe. Um, <laughs> I just <laughs> he clearly I don't was. Know. He clearly well, he clearly wasn't. If he really believed what he was saying, saying he wasn't making any headway with it. No one heard Ferris and went, "Where do I sign up?" <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, he wasn't making. He was making, and, and it's funny because. He used to remember he would talk. He would be like kind of normal, and then all of a sudden he would say some outrageous thing. You'd have to hit the dump button, yeah, right. And um, anyway, God rest his soul. I hope he has peace wherever he is, unless he's listening right now. <laughs> then he won. Then, then he can call it. Yeah, then he won. Yeah. Five zero eight nine nine six zero five hundred is how you can get in the program. Um, Ferris. Ferris. <laughs> so. Uh, anyway, um, where are we? You know, you know what? By the way, you know who would know? Who would know? The 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 the, the British nurse used to be a sidekick. She British? She had a British accent. She said she was born in England. Was she, she British? She walked up to me at the event for Ann Coulter. You weren't there. No, I was not at the event for Ann Coulter. So it was Howie, it was Howie Carr, Ann Coulter. I know um, at the Century House. She, she came up to me. Yeah, and I could tell. And so she was circling around me. Ferris was at that event. Oh yeah, that's one the only time I ever met him. She was circling around me, and I and she was staring <laughs> like at like a me. buzzard. Yes, and I I said, "Hi, can I help you?" And because I know when someone's looking at me, right? Mm-hmm. And um. I'm not, I mean, I, I like to meet people. So, so I said to her, and she looked at me, and she stepped forward. She was well-dressed, kind of tall, and she said, I don't like you. <laughs> 
And I laughed just like that. I went, I went, I went. Well, that line's over there. That's so good. I, I mean, so I guess you don't want me to. I guess you don't want me to sign your book. So, so I said, you know. What, what do you say to that? Other than I said, well, that line forms over there, right? <laughs> so then she, um, I said, oh, oh, okay. But I was laughing because it, it's so funny. I, I don't like you. I'm like, I've heard it before, you know? So that was, what did you, what do you call her? What did she call herself? Psych nurse. The psych nurse. Yeah. <laughs> the psych nurse. I, I think she, I think she called into Jazz's show. Did recently. she? Yeah, it was fairly recent. Well, then um, we got to get it. Well, she would know. She would know. So one way or the other, I uh, want a determination. My uh, my favorite to this day, a uh, listener identifying me in public story is I was at Cork. I was with Hugh Dunn and there was a guy sitting at the bar. Uh, he, had a, he had a beer in his hand. He was a fairly boisterous guy, but very funny. And he, Neil McCarthy, your brother's yep. playing at Cork and he goes, I like this guy. He plays good music. I like his brother. His brother's on the radio, and you and I like, yeah, we know. And then he's like, he's like, I like when uh, he has the six ten liberal on. Everybody yells at him. I said, that's that's me. <laughs> he goes, that's me. What? Yeah, I'm, I'm Marcus Farrow. He goes, oh my god, I recognize your voice. Right. Oh my god, that's you. <laughs> Get this guy a beer. I'm with a celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> that is not my favorite uh, person recognizing you. My favorite is the story. You were in jail I, as, okay, as okay, a lawyer. Okay. No, I wasn't in jail. <laughs> in the jail, I was in lo- I was in lockup at the courthouse. Yeah, right. So, so yeah, I was in, I was in lockup at the courthouse, and I was talking to a client, and then the client was in a difficult situation. As as that's, as clients, that's why he was in jail. As, as clients can be, right? Um, <laughs> that's what makes them clients. That's what makes them clients. But I mean, of a particularly difficult situation. I can't remember exactly what it was because I've had hundreds of clients. But right. I remember this particular. There was a guy sitting behind him um, and said. No one's ever said I'm having a great day with hire a lawyer. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, well, this was an appointed case, and so so the guy the guy says, "Hey, you're the guy on the radio." <laughs> was like, yeah, he goes, "I recognize your voice." I'm like, "What do you think of the show?" He goes, "You guys are pretty funny." That's and, great. And then and then the then the the client turns to me, and this is out in public, right? So this is in front of a bunch of people. It's not it's not a break of privilege because it's a public statement but he says you're famous and you can't help get me out of jail right now and i said that says more about the situation you're in than me uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah that's that was a good one too that was good so i uh, um uh paulie from new bedford says ferris is the first ballot hall of fame uh, hall of fame caller he was he yeah. was he, by the way so uh, we, I'll, I'll share this when he originally started calling, I didn't know who he was, all right? And so like everything else, you Google it, right? So I started Googling his, his Ferris Freud, right? So, of course, you get Ferris Bueller. You get all kinds of stuff, right? But eventually, I started, I found the right way to Google it. Turns out he was calling shows all over the country, right? Mm-hmm. And there was a show in Chicago. Unlike here, they had a call screener. Yeah. And... They had banned Ferris from their show, and I understand why. <laughs> and, of course, the, the, so they had a contest because Ferris kept defeating the call screener and getting through and then saying his obnoxious stuff on the air. So they were going to – they, 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 were, they suspended the call screener. They wanted to know whether they should fire him or not, right? And they were making a bit out of it, right? But I will tell you this. As evidence of that, I was at a um, – well, it'll be coming up again – there's always a party at Bob Schilling's house in New Bedford. Um, I won't give the address out, but <laughs> Bob has, has, a, has an opening day party mm-hmm. for, for the Red Sox for the first home game. Hey, by the way, we've got a Red Sox reporter on uh, at 7 on Friday. That's correct. We yeah, do. We do, yeah. Nice, nice uh, segue. Yeah. So we have, um, so I, I walked into this party and there was a lot of guys from the courthouse, lawyers types, and um, a lot of them I knew. And this is at Bob's house. And so, these guys, uh, to like to the person, they go, "Hey, 
They start asking me, who's that Ferris Freud guy, right? Who is that yeah. guy? I, I go, truthfully, I don't <laughs> I know. know. I never met him, right? And they, they go, because I heard him on Rush Limbaugh today. <laughs> yeah, right? yes. I mean, he would yeah. get through to Rush Limbaugh. Yes, And Rush would. would give him all time, time. All the time. Yeah, time right? All the time, yeah. I mean, he was, it, I, I don't know, but I always pictured he had a bank of phones. Yes. Right? Because because when, when I, how you handle the phones here, I could tell he'd been on hold for a while. Yes. He would, he would, he would call, get an open line, and sit on hold. Until, but he would always have his number blocked, so you'd never know who you were getting. Um, and then he would come up. But you could tell, and at other times, you knew he had dropped you to pick up another line, right? So he was calling talk shows all over the country. Yeah. Um, I hate to speak of him in the, in the past tense. But I, I feel that's what it is. Do. Right. 508 I didn't like it when people doing it about me. <laughs> proof. If you're a caller and you want to give proof of life, 508-996-0500 is how you can call in. Let's take a break. Welcome back. Let's go back to the phones. Good evening. Good evening, gentlemen. Hey, my friend. Hey, what's hey, up? what's going on, my friend? Uh, gentlemen, I didn't get to hear the first part of the uh, program because uh, usually I'm having dinner then and sometimes it gets me off, okay, uh, listening to the show. Sure. But, but I'm sure you guys probably talked about the never-ending battle between the city council and the mayor. We okay? did. We yeah, did. Okay, and I don't know if you brought this aspect into it. You know, Chris, I, I love what you've done in helping um, – a big Al find some place, get a roof over his head. And I well, know that you, was Mark Montigny more I than me. You, but yeah. I, I'm sure you had some small thing to do with that, and, and I love you for it, and mm -hmm. I love you anyway, right. as you know. Yes. Uh, the other thing uh, that uh, I had to laugh the other night uh, was uh, a former counselor, Tom Kennedy, uh, was on the uh, radio talking about how he may be on a slippery slope and he needs some help. Mm -hmm. And him being him and you being you, uh, you tell him, Okay, Tom, uh, go to housing authority. And he says, yeah, but there's other veterans that are yeah. Tom, go to the housing authority. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Tom, uh, Tom, the housing authority. <laughs> right. And again, that's just Tom being Tom. Right. You know, like yes. that. Yeah, he's thinking about other people, even though he might be on a slippery soap. And, and you being you, hey, I tell you, housing authority, housing right. authority, right. Oh, you'll get help, you know. Right. Uh, but I would hope that in this never-ending battle between the mayor and the uh, city council, you'd also bring up the fact that, Either the city council, and I understand the city council's thing, doing the preparation work, not the mayor's, and I might be wrong. Uh, the, the, where they really dropped the ball was the sewage and water problems that we're going to have. Yeah. Uh, Linda goes off the air the other day saying, oh, by the way, right. she cuts her own throat and says, oh, you're going to get a big bill of water and sewage at the end of the, uh, at the beginning of next year. Well, yeah. gee, thanks a lot. And uh, it's because I don't, they didn't I don't care about CPA. That's right. small potatoes. Exactly get, small potatoes, yes. Yeah, yeah. We're going to get it with this. this to, to me, that's a greater faux pas, not only for her, but for some of the people there that I think a lot of, and I don't know how far this grant thing goes back that they were supposed to apply for, uh, Scott Lima, who we're losing, who seems to be, uh, you know, a, a, a smart guy. Right. Uh, even Joe Lopes, who was there at the time, too, who, again, if he ran for city council in Ward 5, is a serious candidate. All right. Uh, all right. But it seems they all dropped the ball on this. And I don't know if the mayor could have done anything about it. <clears throat> and, and that's the most egregious thing that the city council has done to show their ineptness in what they're doing. Now, I think Ian Abrams was there, too, at the time, too. And nobody caught this. He might have been a brand new counselor if he well, was there. Yeah. I, I but, don't know how still, far back he goes. I don't, I don't know either. Actually, they didn't about. pursue a, a, it. It is basically they didn't pursue a, a, a grant for some reason for funding to keep uh, up up to date with uh, EPA standards on the sewage on the sewage treatment. Yes, it, it almost sounds like the old days when they wanted to put a sewage treatment pla uh, plant down in the fort, and they didn't want it down there because of the smell. Right. And it hasn't been that bad, and I don't know if it was John Bullard that was against it, and Rosemary Tierney won, I forget now, it, it goes so far back. I think Bullard put it there. Okay, Bullard did put it there, okay. Right. All right. But I know that there may, I, I think that's what it was. There was problems from the populace that they felt it was going to cost them too much. And it, it was probably the right thing to do as things have worked out. Well, again, the switch streaming plan. Hey, guys, where are they? You know, we're getting killed here with taxes. And, and now, oh, by the way, you got this, too. And I, I, now I heard this morning that possibly they could uh, reapply uh, for the grant. And I hope they would get it. And if the mayor has to work together with him, I, I hope he would sign anything that he has to sign so they're not mad at each other if right. he has to sign anything. But this is going to be a, a, you know, a, a big uh, bite, you know, far bigger than the uh, CPA money.
So I, I think that one of the reasons you're seeing some of the stuff like CPA, get rid of the four-year term, a magic cure for, the, for increasing rents, uh, it is all because it's camouflage. Oh, I agree with you. Yeah. I, I agree with you 100%. But again, it's small potatoes compared to the sewage oh, thing. Oh, it's going to be enormous yeah, amount of money. Yeah. And again, I'll say one other thing about those uh, those referendums. I, I would hope that the mayor might say, okay, you want to put them on, I'll <laughs> sign them on there. I would say that... Let the, me finish. Yeah, go ahead. But I, the mayor's always 10 steps ahead of him, and he's, I'm sure he's got a good a group of followers. Out of the voting public, he might win all those three referendums that mean nothing. Well, you know, that's a good point. <laughs> I, I, I suspect that how it's going to go down is he's going to veto it with a, and dare him to override, all right? Mm -hmm. And then they'll all have to go forward. And he's going to make a very serious case for not only his own reelection, but for why those ballot initiatives have to be defeated well, and why the authors of those ballot initiatives have to be defeated. Well, again, I, that's probably the way it's going to go, but I think if it went on the ballot, since the mayor is always, I would say, out politicking them or ten steps ahead of them, and since he has a, a base of followers over the past years, uh, it's only the voting public gets heard that goes to vote. And as we know in, in New Bedford, a lot of the voting public don't go, and his Backers may go there and uh, uh, rub, you know, I wouldn't say rubber stamp, but uh, right. agree with the mayor. Yes. Say, yeah, we're going to have CPA and we're going to have uh, uh, another four-year term, and uh, you know, and uh, so he may win it even if it went to the ballot. So I, I don't think that. So I, it's going to go on the ballot because they're going to they have the votes to override him. I believe. Yeah, but doesn't it go to the solicitor after that, and the solicitor works for the mayor, and if the mayor doesn't want it, it won't get there. Well, that's do, what I've been hearing on the radio. They'll have to make make a case. Um, but I would imagine that they, they've already run the, the, by their legal counsel um, to get the wording. In fact, Linda already said that David Garotowski gave her the specific wording for the, um, for the, for the, for the CPA funding. But I think, I think that John Mitchell is not only going to veto it, but he's then going to make a case for why these, these are bad measures and that why the, the authors of these our um, dereliction of duty, we've already heard him use, all right? Yeah. Uh, a dereliction of duty mm -hmm. uh, for, for, the, for the process, and that he's going to use this, this really... Look, everybody in the media, even Marcus, who, who likes the, the rent control idea, mm -hmm. um, agrees that the process was horrendous, mm -hmm. yeah. and that we've gotten to this period... You've you got Jack Spillane, who, again, I think, um, as a progressive, is in, is in line with the, the idea at least of rent control. And I think everybody is in line that something's got to be done about the increasing rents in the city of New Bedford, just even if you disagree that this rent control or rent stabilization is the way to do it. Because what we realize is that asking the public their opinion is not a solution. It's it's not it's it, it, it's false hope. It's, yeah, I it's, mean, it's politics. Criminal I agree with you. It's politics, but yeah. I don't mind the public having their say. And then you know, it, it's it's not a binding right. thing. So hey, we've been trying to get people to get involved in the process. I heard you say that this morning. Yeah, I think it's yes. a good point. I do. Yeah, and and again, you you succeeded. You're, you're right. getting people. Yeah, to but follow, yeah, but interest. the problem the problem with that is like in the CPA question, you've got somebody uh, that's an elected position that has at least before purposefully misled people on the CPA and its benefits so it's like it's okay we're gonna get we're going to like getting people to turn out to vote isn't really beneficial if you're gonna lie to them about the things that you're getting them to turn out to vote uh, for and in, in this case the council president misled the public on cpa funding on how much benefit it, it, it costs to the city and how much taxes it cost uh, how much state match they get she misled the public on that she misled the public on the ta uh, on the on the tax uh, benefits and all of that so so if you're gonna mislead the public on that well, then I don't think it's worth getting a higher turnout for that. that Let's get more as, people as, that I've lied to to come to the polls. Be that as it may, it might find, <laughs> you get the voters to find where their precinct is, right. where they go to say, my name is John Smith, <laughs> and can I have a ballot, and okay, bubble these things in, because we don't get a lot of the people who are eligible to vote to vote in the city. And I think that's one of the things you guys have always been trying to do. Yes. Hey, if on a very small step, if, if that's what it does, fine. And, you know, like I say, the mayor and his followers outwork them, 
And so even if it got to the ballot, they might agree with the mayor. Yeah, we want CPA. Yeah, we want another four years. And uh, what's the third one uh, that's coming up there? The rent control. Uh, yeah, rent control. Yeah, we'd like to see some form of rent control. And, you know, it, the, the journey of a, a thousand miles begins with one step. So <laughs> if, if it did that and showed people the way to get to a, a ballot box and, you know, we've, we've all tried to get that whether we agree or disagree with each other, at least out of uh, a, a, a political setup thing, uh, maybe something would be accomplished. Hey, thanks for the call. We got Okay, a... guys, thank you for letting me talk. Thank no you, problem. my friend. By the way, uh, Michelle from McCushnet says Ferris's nurse friend typically calls into Ken's show. Okay. I haven't. I listen to Ken's usually. I haven't yeah, heard it, but I, I haven't heard her. But I do listen to that show every every week. In fact, Tom Hodge is going to be filling in for Ken coming up soon. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. You know what the thing is with Ken's? Is sometimes on Saturdays I wake up later. Right. <laughs> I, I have, so, so I'll tune in. To, I'll tune in, but I'll tune in later. So maybe I missed the call. I I have dialysis on on Saturday, so so I'm up in plenty of time. But sometimes I'm I'm in the shower or engaged in needles in my arms and having my blood removed from my body, <laughs> which puts me to sleep. I'm gonna take a break. <laughs> Listen to us live anywhere in the world on the WBSM. Have your voice heard right now on South Coast Tonight. Call 508-996-0500 or send an app chat message on the WBSM app. Now, back to Chris and Marcus.